Hello everyone, I'm Ishwari. In this video, I'm going to explain the embryology, anatomy, pathophysiology, as well as the clinical features of the tetralogy of fallow. Let's get started. When the fetus is developing, the circulatory system is just a tube carrying blood. The blood flows in this direction in order to provide oxygen to the developing brain. As weeks progress, this part of the tube enlarges to form the heart. This portion is called the bulbous cordis and this part is known as the sinus horn. This region undergoes rotation to ultimately give rise to the four chambers of the heart. The heart starts beating by week four of development, making it the first functional organ to be formed in the fetus. So let's imagine this to be the ventricles. The left and the right ventricles are separated by the interventricular septum. This septum is made of two parts, the muscular septum and the membranous septum. The muscular interventricular septum is formed first. As you can see, it doesn't cover the entire gap leading to the formation of the interventricular foramen. This is later covered by the membranous interventricular septum. We should note that the membranous interventricular septum is composed of endocardial cushion cells which also make up the valves of the heart. These are the arteries that are leaving the heart, the aorta and the pulmonary artery. They are separated by the aorticopulmonary septum. Moving on to the tetralogy of a load, there are four major things you should remember. Ventricular septal defect, pulmonary infundibular stenosis, right ventricular hypertrophy, overriding aorta. It might seem hard to memorize this, but once you understand the mechanism, I'm sure you'll be able to remember them without any difficulty. The issue is that the membranous interventricular septum is not formed here. This is due to the abnormal migration of the neural crest cells. Instead, there is an anterior superior displacement of the infundibular septum which makes the heart look like this. So, there's a gap here which leads to the formation of a ventricular septal defect. Since the outflow tract is narrow, there will be pulmonary infundibular stenosis. As you can see, since the right side of the heart will be working really hard to pump blood out of the narrow outflow tract, the right ventricle will undergo hypertrophy. This gives the heart a boot-shaped appearance on chest x-ray. In a normal heart, the aorta leaves from the left ventricle. In case of the tetralogy of fallow, the aorta shifts a little bit to the right and is located just above the ventricular septal defect. This results in the fourth feature, overriding aorta. The flow through the ventricular septal defect leads to cyanosis. The degree of cyanosis is directly related to the degree of stenosis. I remember this by saying, greater the stenosis, greater the cyanosis. There are two unique clinical features of the tetralogy of flow. Patients with tetralogy of flow experience something known as a death spell. This is basically an episode of cyanosis which is triggered by crying or exercising. The physiology behind this is that 
when the patient cries or exercises, there is low oxygen in the body. Hypoxia triggers vasoconstriction in the pulmonary arteries. Since the resistance here is high and there is low oxygen in the body, there is a large amount of deoxygenated blood flowing through the ventricular septal defect into the aorta. Another interesting feature seen in these patients is that the cyanosis gets better when they squat or are in the knee chest position. The reason behind this is that these maneuvers increase the abdominal pressure, which increases the afterload. Since there is high pressure here, there is a reduction in the amount of deoxygenated blood that flows through the ventricular septal defect. This hence improves the cyanosis. When you auscultate the heart, you are likely to hear two murmurs. A harsh systolic murmur is heard at the pulmonic area. This is due to the obstruction of the right ventricular outflow tract. Another murmur, which could possibly be heard, is a holosystolic murmur at the tricuspid area. This is due to the ventricular septal defect. If this video helped you learn something new, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to ask me your questions and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.